Yeah, yeah. that's a guy from LA who really put a lot of look uh, who put in a lot of work in music business, and I think he's really responsible for a big part of this. I know T D he gets their credit, but um, I think Chris Clancy doesn't get the credit he deserves for coming out of Interscope with all the knowledge that he had over the years for yeah. working with everybody from Tupac to to Snoop to Dre to all the artists he worked at worked in the, in that building Eminem taking that knowledge and understanding how to bring culture and lifestyle together yeah. and you know getting our future and Frank yeah. Ocean and all those guys cuz I think he was the him and his wife was the people who really understood how to rebrand the market and make the LA cultural side come to life from the hip hop side so yeah but this, I, yeah, Chris. I mean, I know about Clancy. I didn't know. I don't know information on Clancy. I know who Clancy well, is. Clancy's Actually, genius. you know what? Well, my office, well, like the the studio that I work at, is next door to Clancy's, and I see Clancy all the time and want to be like, "Hey, Clancy, you're like a legend." But I don't want to. You know what I'm saying? But when you look at, know. if you know the Interscope, if you look at the Interscope history, like how they always had a relationship with Nike yeah. and all the different Clancy was like in the forefront of all that okay. cultural stuff that they were doing. Yeah, on the no, marketing definitely, side, definitely and the product get... management side. Yeah, sorry, my bad for interrupting. I keep, I, I'm talking. You, my, you, I got a big it's head. your interview. I got a big head, bro. So it's, it's like I don't know how to control it all all the time. You know what I mean? That's why my hat is only on the back. Uh, but yeah, no, I gotta give shouts out to Tyler um, for sure because Tyler, even for me, taught me how to, you know what I'm saying, completely be myself. Like, you know what I'm saying? At first, the Our Future Music, bro, was like, there was no no Fs given. <laughs> like, and he, I think, honestly, bro, when I look at brands nowadays, when I look at rappers and how they put their clique together and they all got a clothing line and all that, I give credit to Tyler for kind of showing, like, new artists how to, you know what I'm saying, not only make... Tyler single-handedly made every one of his friends famous, regardless of what they did, then made shirts for all of his friends, branded the whole thing, you know what I'm saying? Like, I feel like even down to, to every every other rapper doing it now, they take the odd future, uh, like, style, you know what I'm saying? Of making just, of making your collective, you know what I mean? A lifestyle, making your brand a lifestyle. Making your brand a lifestyle and just selling it the right way. Selling literally your homies, like and you course, made, and of course we gotta give Anwar his credit in there. Yeah. Oh, Anwar is the <laughs> Anwar is the real homie. You know it's crazy. Anwar and Josh Pease and Casey Veggies. I remember uh, when I would first go to L.A. Those were like the first people like that would teach me and Nolan. Like, cause my homie Nolan, actually the big homies, the real big homies in Super Duper Kyle's life is Pac Div. I'm the, do you remember Pac Div? I'm gonna talk about them also. Pac Div, yeah. Pac Div, Side. Yeah, all them. They were like the ones. My uh, my manager Nolan. He went on tour with them first and then came back and was like, bro, I know what to do now. You know what I'm saying? He just got off tour with Pac Div. And then we went out to L.A. They were the ones I would always go to their shows, uh, go to the studio with them, watch them record. And, uh, yeah, do you know what? Funny enough, even before TDE, they definitely were bringing a whole new sound to, like, oh, yeah, being from L.A. at first. They kind of yeah. came behind yeah. the far side. I know, yeah. I know there was a lot of time in between it. and There were probably some stories in there that we're missing. Yeah. But they were, like, the ones who really... If they would have had Chris Clancy in their life, they could have been definitely. It would have been, future. yeah, for sure. It would it would have been. I don't know if the shock factor is the same, but they definitely the sky's the limit for them. Like they're they're that talented, especially like yo, like the thing is, Mibs. There's not a cooler person than him, and then like there's not like a more talented person. So when you throw those together, he's cool too. You know what I'm saying? And they're brothers. So when you throw that together, it's like you know what I'm saying that combination was deadly for sure. Now, um. Beautiful loser. I know you. I know you, it, it has to be some connection to those to the um, to Nike with that with the Blazers. Oh, nah, man. You know, I I haven't gotten a check from nobody. For, what, bro? I don't know. You know I the just, legendary Nike Blazer color has beautiful loser on the back. Really? You gotta get a pair. What size oh, you wear? Nine and a half. I'm gonna bring you a pair. You're lying. I'm gonna bring you a pair. Really? Brand new. Thank you, bro. I'm gonna wow. bring you. <laughs> I thought when I when I heard about the album, I just knew it was a connection. You know, I named that album, this is going to sound so lame, well, no, it's not. I named that album Beautiful Loser after uh, my aunt uh, Betsy's favorite singer, which is Bob Seger. Wow. Yeah. Beautiful Loser, where you going to find Get on your phone now and Google Be Nike Lodge. Beautiful Loser Blazer. Yeah. You know Bob, you know Bob yeah, Seger, Yeah, of course. Right? Yeah. You know the album? I don't know the album. Oh, you got an album called Beautiful Loser. Wow. What a song called Beautiful Loser, which is really beautiful. I know. I know. I sound lame. I know. <laughs> But hey, Bob Seeger is hard. What about the connection to Yachty? Uh man, you know what? So Yachty, you know, funny enough, we were talking about dancing. Yachty and his homie Perry, they do like dance moves at their shows. They would do like a little dance moves. And then me and Britt, we've been doing dance moves at our shows. So the internet was trying to pin us against each other and do like a you guys served dance battle. 
and like set up a show and all that. Thank God it didn't happen. You know, I definitely would have came out with the dub. But um, yeah, they were trying to set up like this dance battle. And then and that's how I met him online. And then when I was making I Spy, I was just playing the chords, you know. And I was like, yo, this definitely sounds like a Yachty vibe. And I was thinking, hmm, who can I get on it? And then a little a cloud appeared above my head and popped in it was Lil Yanni. He was like, hey, bro, come on, bro. Mess with me, bro. You know I got the sauce, come on. You know don't anybody else gonna sound better Don't worry this. about the haters, bro. Uh, don't worry, hey, just live, bro. What's wrong, Kyle? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so then I just FaceTimed him and was like, yo, I think I got this song, and I don't know if it's gonna be tight or not, but you wanna hop on it? And he was like, play, play it real quick. Play literally, this is how you know Lil Yachty's a genius. Play like three seconds of it. So I, I for sure, yeah, I'm coming through. Be there in 30 minutes. Three hours later, Lil Yachty showed up and just bodied it, bro. Wow. Like, he's tapped in. He really understands oh, he what's understand. tight right now. People who don't understand him just don't understand the lane of where everything is going, where everything is. There's a there's yeah. like there's like a lane for a lot of different things. Hip-hop is just really diversified. A lot of people can't accept it because they want it to stay what it was and what it used to be yeah. and, and, and do it the way they want it done. But it's, it's never going to be like that. And, and if we do that to ourselves, we're going to disco ourselves and just be done. You know what I'm saying? Like... Like the gatekeepers of it. Well, now we got the internet. There's not that many gatekeepers, but like I feel like the older generation. Well, you're right. What you say is exactly right. Like people who hate on like Lil Yachty or hate on Lil Uzi or hate on these new people like Kodak and all this. Like they're not helping at all. Like the older generation of hip hop has to understand. Yes, you might not like it, but rap has to change. You can't fight against it. If it doesn't change, we're going to be disco and we're just going to die out. But the people who hate it don't understand that these. These artists are a product of their environment, and we created their environment for them, so it's really our fault. It's, yeah, <laughs> yo, can't have said it better myself. Like, they're just inspired, like, everything is inspiration. The reason, I, the reason I am the way I am is inspiration. The reason you are the way you are is because you have idols you looked up to. You exactly. know what I'm saying? They shape who you are. And whether it be your parents or whether it be artists, like, all this thing. So, Lil Yachty and them, they just have to understand that, you know what I'm saying, these are kids that are 18, 17, you know what I'm saying? Small kids influenced by their influenced communities. by their communities and by rappers that you know what I'm saying are the older generation's peers. You know what I'm saying? They're influenced by 808 to Heartbreak. They love that album. You know what I'm saying? Of course they want to sing everything in auto tune. You know what I mean? Like it's just that's what it is. And you gotta just let you know what I mean? You gotta let you gotta let it be, man. Let it live. You gotta let it live. You gotta let little Yachty live. Bro. Hey, don't, hey, don't worry, man. You know, hey man, F them kids, bro. Look around. Look at life. <laughs> man, you know what? You're right. Yeah, I know we all got colored hair now, but it's fine. Man, you know a little boat, you got. <coughs> hey, man, positive vibes. Yeah. Bomb noise. <laughs> Cal's in the building tonight. He's in the loft tonight for a sold-out show at ATL. Thanks for coming to the studio, homie. Hey, thank you. Thank you for not only giving a really awesome interview, but dropping some game, because my favorite thing to do in life is learn. So shouts out to you. This was an honor. Shouts out to Atlanta. I love y'all. This show tonight about to be crazy. Like I said, if you can't get in, FaceTime your friend. You don't want to miss it. Super Duper Kyle, Bomb Noise. <laughs> All right.